solid mineral taxation otherwise called taxation of a mineral sector the mineral sector of a country is di always divided into two we have the petroleum sector or the petroleum industry and we have the solid mineral industry so this course is about the taxation of uh, this revenue from the solid mineral sector or industry in terms of definition that is definition of a mineral taxation these are fiscal regime types and taxation instruments used in assessing t in assessing taxable persons or companies in the solid mineral industry otherwise called extractive industry that is the mineral taxation are the fiscal regime types and taxation instruments used in assessing taxable persons or companies in the solid mineral industry or extractive industry that is it is the appropriate development and taxation of natural resources industry therefore it is the process of administration assessment and collection of tax on solid mineral revenue solid mineral resource taxation of solid mineral resources has at least three dimension of uh, importance to host country in the developing uh, world they are a the level of taxation the level of uh, taxation b the structure of taxation that is whether it is in terms of royalty that is taxation on production on their production or it is a uh, income taxes that is taxation on a profit so the structure of taxation and three which is c the transparency of the resulting revenue stream the transparency of the resulting revenue streams that is about that is a uh, about tax payment so that elected representatives and common citizen can track can track where revenue goes that that word transparency is about how the revenue the, how the revenue that accrued in form of tax is being shared so that representative elected representatives of uh, communities and common citizens will be able to track where the revenue goes taxation of minerals for government is directly linked linked to the concept of permanent sovereignty the concept of permanent sovereignty over natural resources and to perception of exploitation revenue generation and partnering in development therefore when we are looking at a mineral taxation we should not be looking at just the money that is co being collected from there we should be looking at other things in terms of rel relationship between the government and its uh, citizen next is evolution of a mineral taxation mineral taxation plays an important role in the industry's ability to obtain and maintain a social license to operate the links between natural resources extraction and development are neither automatic nor direct because the revenue accruing to government from taxing the sector is a key component of its potential contribution to development therefore there is a need to translate mineral wealth into socio economic development so this one tends to tell us how important is uh, the mineral taxation government in designing fiscal regimes that is in designing the structure of mineral taxation face significant trade off between various objectives and also the need to take account of a combination of economic socio political 
and institutional factors. Therefore, the evolution of mineral taxation is well, can be looked at it, can be looked at vis a vis with the sovereignty of a nation. Most of the developing countries of the world collect their revenue or they base their budget on a revenue from solid minerals. So therefore, therefore solid minerals can be traced, the evolution of solid mineral taxation can be traced back to when those countries actually gain their independence or when the, the, the recolonization of those uh, countries actually started. The resource rent principle provides that taxation should be based on profitability and not on a uh, production or sales. So this one is telling us that there are two principles whereby mineral taxation can be based. One is uh, on production. Two, which is the second one, is on uh, profit. Still looking at uh, the evolution, let us discuss the fiscal regime types that, have, that I mentioned earlier. Fiscal regime types. In the extractive industries, there are broadly two alternative types of a fiscal system. One is called royalty slash a tax concession system. And the second one is a contractually based system the contractually based system can be likened to the production sharing contract that we have under the petroleum uh, that we have in the petroleum industry but it is unusual to use this contractual based system in the mining sector although the practice varies be, uh, between and within developed and uh, developing uh, countries. While in the developed countries, the fiscal uh, terms applicable to mining investments are usually legislated, legislated unilaterally. But in many developing countries, where robust legislation has sometimes not been developed, terms are typically set out in project-specific uh, negotiation a negotiated mining agreement. That is why you see that Nigeria is using production sharing contract. That is an example of a contractually based system. Project specific arrangements can provide government with flexib flexibility to take account of particular geographical and other local, local circumstances. But they can also have a weakening effect on institutional checks and balances. That is when you are looking at a contractually based uh, system. In the contractually based system, agreements are confidential in some countries and they can preclude companies and government from effectively engaging in transparency initiative. Also there, is also, there is also a question as to whether the use of negotiated agreement in the absence of a more fully developed legal system, a more fully developed legal system in the sector, might undermine the development of such a system. So, those are the fiscal types, the fiscal regime types that we have and their advantages vis-a-vis -vis the disadvantages.